What's up guys, my name is Jake. By day, I'm a marketer and by night, I run a 250,000 follower Instagram network. In this video, I'll be teaching you how you can make mad stacks buying and selling Instagram accounts. Let's get into it. I got a lot of inspiration for this video from my buddy Josh Ryan, and if you haven't, I highly suggest that you check out his YouTube channel where he does Instagram marketing videos just like me. Link will be in the description. And I know a lot of people out there wanna buy and sell Instagram accounts for a profit, so make sure you smash the thumbs up button so that way more people can come see this video and it really helps out the channel. And in this video, I'll be talking about the three keys to buying and selling Instagram accounts safely and effectively. So make sure you stick to the end so that way you can unlock the secret. The first thing that we'll be covering is how to find the right accounts to buy. Now I hear you, you might be like, Jake, Jake, I'm just gonna do a quick little Google. We're gonna find some marketplaces to buy myself a spicy little Instagram account. Well, let me stop you right there in your tracks. There's a problem with these marketplaces, and in my opinion, they are absolute garbage. They're filled with nothing but scammers and dead accounts. When buying accounts, don't use Reddit, don't use Telegram, don't use Discord servers unless it's under a rare circumstance. In most Discord servers, they will try to get you to accept vouchers from other servers. These are not plausible. The only place that I would buy an Instagram account that's not directly from the source on Instagram is in a trusted Discord server. And one of those is actually the one I'm a moderator that I'm a part of because we do not tolerate any sort of spammy activity. They automatically get the ban hammer. Link will be in the description if you guys wanna join. If not, no big deal, but it will give you access to a bunch of accounts and people willing to sell accounts that aren't scammers. But still, as a word of warning, make sure that you take my server with a grain of salt and you are still cautious because people do scam and I cannot moderate everything personally. If you do plan to take the risk of using one of these marketplaces or Discord servers, make sure you have enough trust in yourself and you recognize all the red flags of a transaction so that way you can pull out of a deal before it goes bad. And remember, a scammer will do everything in their power to sneakily try to scam you no matter how intelligent you are. So now that we've got all the warnings out of the way, where and how do you buy Instagram accounts safely and effectively? So say you really love memes and you wanna buy a meme account. The first thing that you wanna do is check out a bunch of meme accounts. Go to socialblade.com, you'll be able to run the statistics on the account and see if this is a good financial move for you. Now these meme accounts, if you've checked out their social blade, you'll be able to see if they're growing or if they're losing followers. Then from there, you'll actually be able to group these accounts and determine which ones are the best pick for you. So you might actually think the engagement on an account is bad if it has 2,000 followers but only 10% engagement. Well, let me tell you that's actually pretty solid engagement and engagement actually decreases as pages get larger. So there may be another one with 20,000 followers and only 5% engagement and that is still a good deal. Actually, it is a better deal than the one with 2,000 followers and 10% engagement. Now, as these Instagram pages get larger, their engagement always decreases and that's for a multitude of reasons. One such reason is that someone may have been using Instagram six months ago and they no longer use it today. Now think about how old these large accounts are. They're actually pretty old. So there will be an increasing amount of inactive accounts that follow these accounts, therefore decreasing the engagement. When someone posts on Instagram, the post is shown in the feed to a select number of followers. Now, if someone is an inactive follower, the post will still show up on that inactive follower's feed, but nobody will be there to interact with the post. Therefore, that post will have a lower chance of being shown to more people that follow the account. So let's head back to the determining factors of whether or not you should buy an Instagram account. The most important thing that you are looking for when you're buying an Instagram account is to see that that account is growing. And you'll be able to see that when you actually look up the account's social blade, but you wanna see that it's growing and even better, you wanna see that it's growing at an upward trend. And you might be like, Jake, how much do Instagram accounts cost? Well, the cost is deterministic on the niche and the size of the account. So when you are going to make an offer, make sure that you just ask a bunch of Instagram accounts of similar sizes, how much they would price their page at, make a reasonable offer that is beneficial for you. And to do this, all you need to do is take the meme accounts or any account in question, DM them, ask them if they're willing to sell, and if so, at what price. It might take a while to find one that you're really interested in or that matches your price range, but that's okay. As I always say, Instagram is about the long game. The second key is how to determine if an account is worth buying. And there are three main things that you are looking for when you are actually looking to purchase an Instagram account. 
These three things are an engaged audience, consistent growth, and regular posting. And if it has all three things, this is what I like to call the triple kill or the trifecta. This means the account is likely on an upward trend and a solid investment for the right price. So let's get into the first point for determining if an account is worth buying and that is an engaged audience. You know you have an engaged audience when the posts frequently hit the explore page and if they don't hit the explore page, they still do pretty well relative to the page's size. Now I know we've all seen them, those accounts that have a large amount of followers and haven't posted in a long time, but when they were posting, they did super well. And I will bet you anything that this account is just a ghost with a bunch of followers and they don't give a crap what you post. So if you do post, you're actually going to lose followers. Don't invest in an account like this. The work that it takes just to revive this account is definitely not worth your time unless you get a crazy good deal on an account and you believe that you have the time investment to put into this. So make sure once you've found an account that you think is worth your while, you check other accounts of a similar size to make sure that your engagement is as good, if not better than these accounts that consistently hit the explore page. You can find a lot of them on the explore page. You can find them on the hashtag page if they're ranking in hashtags and that's how you get to them. And you don't want to compare different niches with each other because if you have an account in the marketing niche and you have an account in the video game meme niche, the likes will be completely and utterly different. In this specific case, I can guarantee you that the engagement on the marketing account is actually going to be lower than the engagement on the video game meme account of a similar size because of the demographic who uses the platform. And this can be determined by making some quick little buyers personas and realizing who's actually following the marketing account and who's following the video game meme account. The people following the marketing account, you'll know that they're most likely adults who are working and adults typically use Instagram less or, you know, less frequently than minors do. Now the people following the video game meme account are probably younger, likely minors, people in college, but usually not adults. There will be adults that follow, but it's a small subset. And the reason that adults can't use Instagram as much as children is obvious. It's because we've got jobs, we've got things to attend to, we've got girlfriends, wives, kids, you know, all that crap. So going back to Social Blade, you'll be able to see how much an account is growing and how fast it's growing and how often. If you're seeing that upward curve like we were mentioning earlier, that's a good sign that the account is doing well. And you can also check to make sure that nobody's buying a bunch of followers and shoving them all the, on the account because you'll see losing followers, losing followers, losing followers, plus 10,000 followers. Nah, they bought those followers and they're crap and they're actually gonna fall off of the account anyway as Instagram finds out those accounts are crap and pull them off their platform. So the second point within the second key is to make sure that you've got that consistent growth and that's very important. The third point within the second key is to make sure that the account posts regularly. It might not post super regularly regularly, but if it does and it does well, then that's a good sign for an account that somebody's probably trying to get rid of because they're either too busy or they're getting bored with it. Now, if an account is posting regularly and every day, that's even better and the posts are doing super well because you know that account is consistent, the followers are there, and you can just make a ton of progress, especially with that consistent growth upward. And a good way to verify post frequency is actually just to scroll down through their accounts, go down for like the last couple months, make sure that there aren't any large gaps in between to where they just reignited that account and they're slowly loading followers onto the account. And going back to our earlier point, when you're actually messaging these people, don't be shy because the worst thing that they can say is no. So at this point, you've got somebody willing to sell you an Instagram account for a price that you are comfortable with. So let's get on to the third key, how to safely complete a transaction. And this is probably the trickiest part of the bunch. When you're buying accounts, make sure that you only use PayPal goods and services unless you're selling to someone you trust or know in real life. And the reason behind using goods and services is because if something goes wrong, then you'll be able to contact PayPal, file a dispute, and get your money back. That's why a lot of scammers like to use Venmo, Cash App, Bitcoin, and PayPal friends and family because you can't get your money back. So do not, under any circumstances, fall for this. So keep watching because now we're really going to get into the juice. To get a refund with PayPal, you'll need to have screenshots of the transaction or even better, you can add on a short written signed contract by both parties and I can guarantee you, you'll get your money back. And another good thing to mention when you're doing these transactions is to ask the person if they are comfortable hopping on a call of any kind with you. I prefer Discord personally because if you're on a call, there's less room for air, there's less room for something going on that's kind of shady. And if they are shady, they're likely not going to want to hop on this Discord call with you. 
But as I'm saying here, everything in a call happens instantly. You don't have to wait for someone to reply to the messages. You don't have to wait for someone to type out a message. You got a problem, take care of it right on the spot. Once you've actually paid for the account through PayPal Goods and Services, make sure that you actually secure this account. And what you wanna do is ask the seller if they have the original email that came with the account linked to the account. And if you are a seller, even better, you want to be able to give that buyer that original email that comes with the account. So get that email, change the credentials in the email, lock it all down, lock the Instagram account down, and make sure you have yourself another email address on hand. I prefer to use Gmail because then you will set this as your new email on the account if you plan on keeping the account. If not, keep it the original email. But still make sure you keep that original email address and put the credentials somewhere for safekeeping. And make sure you don't link your actual phone number to the Instagram account, but only the emails because somebody can actually hack your account by using your phone number. That's why you wanna lock it down with the Google 2FA Authenticator app if you really wanna lock it down. And if you're looking to sell your Instagram account, there are a lot of Discord servers and you as the seller have a lot more power than the buyer. So just make sure that if you're gonna sell an account, be legit, don't scam people. We wanna keep this a nice, clean industry. But that about wraps up this Instagram marketing video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I wish I could make a 45 minute hour long video on how to do this stuff and show you step by step. So the next time I actually do buy or sell an Instagram account, I will record the entire transaction for everyone to view. So with all this said, I hope that you guys learned a crap ton about buying and selling Instagram accounts. If you did, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button, smash that like button, and I'll catch you in the next one.